I see update. I I I I hyperventilate. I hyperventilate. I hyperventilate. What I meant to say was hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Station Is, and yes, there has been an update to the IC, and it is freaking awesome. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's um. No, 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 talk. <sighs> right, so we've had an update. There has been a few things changed. We've got some new commands. We've got uh, a few changes to the way things operate. And we have got a hell of a lot of new potential to this thing. Um, so, uh, first up, I guess the editor has changed. It now has context-sensitive help. So if you try and type something in... It gives you the instructions for it. So as you type in load, it says you need to register a device and whatever method you're using there, a logic type. Um, so there's no more forgetting what it is. And you don't have to look it up in the function tab using that old-fashioned alphabet thing. And this has changed too. So you can just type it has a search on it there. If you're looking for something, that's all you have to do. If you want to load, that's it. Load, it loads batch, load batch slide, load register. It's, 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 it's all there. It's awesome. As I say, it does it as you type. That is amazing. Um, as I say, it's not just that. We do have some uh, more commands. Uh, which gives us a hell of a lot of opportunity for making other things. Because now, no more having to have a batch slot reader in what we do. Because we have a batch slot command. So you can sort off. Um, you, those last few dirty logic chips that I have in my AC cabinets, they can now go away. Um, and our chips. Oh, there's some new characters. Oh, that new one we got. We can now put in uh, strings uh, with a preprocessor command, uh, which is just simply a hash. Uh, we can then sort of just put in whatever we want to do. Uh, hello. And that will convert that string into a hash value that can then be used in other commands. And what would you do with that, you say? Well, you can now address items by name. Um, so if it's a batch command, so I don't need a pin for it. So if you've got a heap of Harveys all running off a single chip and you suddenly want them to uh, be something, do something different, well, you can do that. Because uh, I can now, even though all these ones here, I'm just batch writing to them all. So I've got to wait until they're all in the same state until I can use them all. But now I can control each one individually with batch commands. Previously, if you wrote a batch command to a Harvey, all the Harveys would respond. But now we have a load batch named command. So whatever this one is named, it'll look for a Harvey, but it'll look for a Harvey with a certain name. So if I call you uh, Larry, um, I'll probably give you something to plant now, won't I? Yoink. Now, so all I have to do, where are we? We just grab the Harvey hash. And I shall. You and I shall save batch named device hash, which is Harvey. Now the name of the Harvey I want to get, which I can just uh, get with the hash command. Hash uh, Larry. And then we want to say uh, plant. Uh, one. 
So now if I give a heap of things to everyone, uh, and I say export that, I put out a batch command, but only one of them has responded, which was Larry. All the Harveys ignored that one, even that was a batch command going to the Harveys, only the one named Larry responded. Um, was that because it was the only one switched on? And they all switched on. What are you talking about? Um, right, so it is now looking for a specific one. Uh, so I guess we can probably say if there is more than one named the same thing. Uh, so if you are... Mo, you are both Mo. If I send the command out to Mo, does it go to two? Um, export. Holy shit, it does. <laughs> right, so now I can access multiple ones. If I just give them all different names, I can use no pins on my chip and yet still be able to talk to each one of those individually. So I should now be able to run a crap ton of Harveys off the one chip. No more multiple chips. Uh, so let's see if I can run all of these Harveys off the one chip. So I will get rid of you because I now have a batch slot read command and I can get rid of you, you, you and just have the one Harvey, one chip controlling the Harveys. Now, so we can load batch slot. Uh, oh. Ah, um, I don't have a lot to load batch slot name. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. We have a load batch and a save batch. But there was no batch slot. They finally give us a batch slot and they come out with these new batch names and, uh, Load batch name, save batch name, and there's no slot. Ah, oh, you rotten. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a load slot and a load batch slot. There is no load batch slot named. No! <laughs> I thought I'm going to have 100 Harveys hooked up to a single chip, but um, I can't read slots. I can't have 100 hydroponics hooked up there and read them individually. Oh, crap. Well, well, if you're not using slots, you can have as many devices as you like attached. Um, so I guess... Uh, oh, things like light display. This one was sort of tapped out. We're having one for the, the memory, which inputs the signal, and uh, I could put five lights on it, and I've used all of my pins. Now I can have as many lights as I want on there, all as long as they're all named differently, all running off the one I see. I can even fill up the whole wall. I could even build a very low-resolution television. Hmm... No, that'd be silly. Hmm. It'd be very low resolution. It's limited by the number of 128 lines of code. Um, that would be cool, though. It'd be like the good old days with your EGA monitors. For K, my ass. You'd be lucky if you had 100 dots across your screen. Um, oh, but I could get my printers. They're not, they're not using slot. They, uh, no, they are using slots. Oh, well, my printers won't go on to. 
Oh, yes, right. Which brings me to the next one there. Our uh, load reagents command has changed. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, try there. Load reagents. Now this one here, uh, it has changed. It will break your code. So um, that you'll have to do a bit of uh, updating on that one if you want to. Whereas it used to load a reagent via a, a name, it now requires you to do it via a, a, a hash value. Okay, I've been playing with this for a little while now and it is not as straightforward as I thought. Now I thought uh, if you're looking for iron ingots, you just put in the hash number for iron ingots, but that's not the way it's done. You actually need the hash value for iron, which is different to iron ingots. Um, so if we have uh, iron, uh, we don't want iron ingots, we want this iron here. Um, so there's a name type of it there, and that is the hash code, which is not the same as iron ingots. Um, so, uh, yeah, just be careful on that one there. I thought they had made it so it actually makes good sense, but um, no, see, that's a t completely different prefab. That is an item iron ingot, uh, whereas we just want the hash for iron. They're completely different things, even though we're looking for iron ingots. That's not what we use. So uh, just be careful on that one there. Be aware of it, because um, that's what it is. Uh, right, so now, as I was saying, if we port this into another language, this script, um, that line there, iron, won't translate. So um, uh, if you port into a, 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 uh, another country that doesn't speak English, um, like Australia, um, uh, <laughs> You port it to an American one there where the word for iron is uh, ketchup. Um, it won't translate because it'll be looking for iron. Um, so if you've got to, if you put the actual hash value in there though, um, so if we push one, uh, put you in there for uh, iron. Uh, <laughs> try again. As I said, uh, English speaking languages. Uh, you. I change that out for you and just put that in there. Um, see, it's a different number to what we're actually the item we're looking for. I'm sure it made sense when they were programming it. Uh, now, so that one I can input, I can port this uh, script to any language, any localized language there, and that should still work. Uh, um, yeah, so uh, I hope that one translates. That's just meant to be a that just changes to a number. Uh, oh well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, so that should then work in any language and not crash the, the game for them. Uh, anyway, uh, so that's got them working again. So just be careful with what you're searching for. You've got to search for the iron, iron, not the iron ingots, uh, or it won't work. Um, right now. Another thing we did get, there have been uh, some changes to trade. We've got our trade up here, we're going to set up. Now uh, they have made some changes to trade. They've very balanced the what certain vendors buy. There's less, the small traders will buy less, the big traders will buy more. Um, but most importantly, they've given trade what it has been so desperately lacking. They have given it a purpose. Uh, so you can now actually buy stuff that you cannot make because previously you could just buy a heap of crap that you could actually just make yourself a lot easier and a lot faster. So um, yeah, it was pretty useless, but now you can get stuff that you can't actually make. So now the appropriate position for your power switch is actually on for your trade system because um, it's now worth looking for. You can get stuff that you can't actually make. Uh, now I did, uh, I haven't found any yet, but I have treat, cherry, cheated them in. Now we got infinite filters. Uh, they are, these are filters that are of course are infinite, they shall never run out. Now that is, well it's pretty overpowered, but I mean the, the other large filters we've currently got, I think I can run them for about a year before they, or about a hundred days before they actually run out. So um, 
having one that never runs out is not much different. Um, I see the only real problem with these ones there, I now don't need a reason to write some code to monitor my filters and tell me when they're wrong and get some code to put up some nice colored lights to tell me when I need to change them and alarms to make noises to tell me when to change them. So well, actually they're stupid. I don't like them anymore. Why would I not want to make alarms and lights? <laughs> Pointless. Now we also have our high volume gas canisters. Gas canisters. Ah, uh, English. Um, now these things, I do hold more gas. Now I've just blown these ones up to a megapascal each. Um, although they're not insulated, so they've actually gone up in pressure now. This one holds 31 mole. And this one holds 41 mole. So it actually holds more gas at the same pressure. But as we can see, both, it is not insulated. So um, that's a little bit of an issue there. But these ones can go up to 25 megapascals. I think these ones could go up to 10. The, the smart canisters, these ones here, could go up to 20. These ones can go up to 25, and they're bigger. So you can actually store more in it there. But um, being not insulated, maybe, maybe not. But um, yeah, you can't have everything. Now we have this thing here, a large wireless battery. Uh, now, this one is... Once again, it's just a wireless battery there, but it has twice the capacity of the uh, regular large ones because it's extra large. Uh, so this one, I like to have the rechargeable batteries there because I don't have to recharge them, um, but they don't have much power. So things like your welder were completely useless. Well, mostly useless. You'd weld up like 10 items there and the battery would be flat. So <laughs> yoink! I'll be looking for you. All right, not a problem. Um, oh, and probably, and one for you as well. Uh, there we go. <laughs> it's 144 kilowatts on that one. We have 72 on the standard battery. So nice. That's doubled Amy's capacity. And yeah, so those ones will be things I'll be keeping a lookout for. And of course, along with all that stuff comes a host of bug fixes and optimizations. There, a heap of redundant code has been removed to try and grab a few extra frames. My base probably isn't big enough at the moment to see any improvement in frame rate. Uh, but lots of little things change, uh, things that you'd never notice. Um, but they all tiny little things there. They say that you won't notice, but they all add up to a big thing. Um, now look. Pumpkins in these trays are now no longer huge. Uh, probably wasn't a big issue. Oh, found a trader. Right, but I guess the real test of any bug fix fixing session is have they got the critical things done? No! His game's all ruined! No, no, that's not what's meant to happen. It goes in that way. No! That, that, no! Yeah. Nope, that's it. That's it. We're out of here. No more. Uh, can I come with you? Let's go. Um, yeah, come on. Let's go. Ow! 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 You left me behind, you bastard. I could come. Oh, oh I wanted to go with you. <laughs> no escape. I'll just have to deal with the cans of French fries going the wrong way. Ah, ah, right. We have some constants at it so positive infinity, negative infinity, pi. Conversions for degrees to radians, radians and epsilon. I'm not quite sure what people are programming to require infinities, but um, it's there. You also have, have a, a, a NAND one there for not a number. Uh, so you can use that for resolving things. We also have ways of testing now. So error functions there for set, set NAND. So set uh, a register if 
you have um, if the, the result is not a number, uh, so just a way of tracking errors in any of your code should it be. Uh, so a few things like that. And I'd say the main thing I like on there is the batch named calling so we haven't run out of pins anymore. We can put as many things on it as we like and not have to use a single pin. Uh, now there's also another thing with uh, putting channels and stuff on there which I don't really understand. So I'm going to have to have a bit of a play with that one and find out what it's all about. Uh, yeah, me television's kind of crap. Um, but there you have it. That is 16 devices, all individually referenced from a single IC. And I haven't used a single pin. And I don't even have to isolate the network because these are all named and the code will call each of them individually. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, that's just a test one there. Uh, I'll see what we can do. I wonder if I can make a very low resolution game of Pong. Eh, maybe not. Uh, sure, somebody will though. Anyway, um, anyway, I've probably missed a heap of other things there, but uh, that'll probably do us for today. So, uh, yeah, we've got some new stuff to play with there. We have a huge potential of stuff there that we can actually do now with all of this. Um, no more running out of pins on your IC, because you can now name them all individually. You can call a device by name. That is so cool. Uh yeah, I'm going to have to go reprogram a crap ton of things now. Um, yay! But anyway, I'll go do that and we'll see you later till next time. Happy building. See ya. But I still want a named slot reader for my Monster Harvey controller. Oh well, next time. See ya.